let's take a moment off from our look at exhilarating concepts and strange new philosophies and have a bit of fun. We're going to look at a game through the eyes of three kinds of players. One, Mr. Metallic shows us a person who dreams of thinking like a machine. The second is a guy, Mr. Pink, who knows nothing of imbalances, but seeks to live and die by the chess is about material and threats mind stream. Our third, Mr. Orange, is an imbalanced lover. The first two will team up and take white, and the third will handle the black pieces. Note that the white players will be better at calculation, while black will have a superior knowledge of opening theory. Mr. Metallic and Mr. Pink versus Mr. Orange, Fantasyland 2009. Mr. Metallic says, Any reasonable moves will leave us point one two to point one eight ahead. I'll go for that point one eight figure. Mr. Pink says, I want to play one e four. Does this hang anything? No. So far, so good. Are we threatening anything after one e four? Not yet, but once we get our bishop and queen out, we'll shred the sucker. Okay, one e four is good. Mr. Orange, they gain central space, free their light squared bishop and queen, and took control over the d5 square. e4 is obviously a good move, but my very strange-looking opponents seem to be aggressive sorts, so I'll throw a bit of violence back at them and see how they react. Mr. Metallic. Ah, an inferior reply. Now we're point three seven up. Victory is almost ours. Mr. Pink. Danger, danger. Our e-pawn is hanging. Danger. We must take his pawn, and when he recaptures, we'll bring a new attacking piece out and attack his queen at the same time. Oh yeah, this is going to be good. He takes d5. Mr. Orange. They played the best reply. I'll develop a piece and take back on d5 with my knight. I've looked over this line a bit, and it's interesting, especially if they don't know what they're doing. Knight f6. Mr. Metallic. I think we can win material. By definition, I will eat everything that's offered. Mr. Pink. He didn't allow queen takes d5, knight c3, when we're attacking his queen. He would be dead meat then. Now I think we can win a pawn with 1c4. True, in that case, he can attack our queen with 3 bishop g4. But we could attack him right back with f3. Am I good or what? So white plays pawn to c4. Mr. Orange. The vacant look in their eyes tells me that they don't have a clue. Of course, I can't be sure of that. Perhaps they intend to answer my c6 with d4 when we'll transpose into the Panov Botvinnik variation of the Karo Khan. Since I'm mainly a Karo Khan player, I don't mind this at all. c6. Mr. Metallic, he's giving us a pawn. We'll have at least a .26 plus. Mr. Pink, we can chop on c6 when we're a solid... We can chop on c6 when we're a solid pawn up. What if we take by d takes c6 and he attacks us with bishop g4? We can still attack him back with f3. But I see something that's really cool. c takes b7. Bishop takes d1, b, b takes a8, queen, and it's over. I'm a genius. d takes c6. Mr. Orange, wow. I didn't think they would go for that. I'm now a pawn down, but after I recapture with my knight, I'll have a lead in development, which gives me a dynamic plus and chances for attack, control of the hole on d4, a long-term static advantage, and pressure against white's backward d-pawn. Another static plus. Knight takes c6. Mr. Metallic. A pity. The other recapture gave us at least a .72 advantage. Now he has some play, but a pawn is a pawn, so we should be happy. Mr. Pink. So we're already a pawn up. Does he have any threats? Just bishop g4, which we can answer. But we can answer it with knight f3, or bishop e2, 
or F3, or just about anything. So let's just say A3. They can answer with bishop E2, knight F3, or F3. All we need to do is get our guys out, castle, and our extra pawn will win in the end game. Isn't that what the grandmasters always do? Knight C3. Mr. Orange, I own D4, but I would like to increase my control over that square again. I also need to develop my dark square bishop and castle. E5 seems to address all these issues. Of course, E5 does weaken the D5 square, but he's so far behind in development that there's no way for him to take advantage of D5 for a long time to come. E5. Mr. Metallic. We're up 0 0.09. We're still in charge and we're a pawn ahead still. Mr. Pink, he intends to answer knight f3 with e4, attacking our knight. Fortunately, we should play d3 when his pawn advance is stopped. Then we can follow with knight f3, bishop e2, and castle. And we're on our way to glory. White plays pawn to d3. Mr. Orange, okay, I have all sorts of good positional options, and I'm a bit confused. Bishop G B4 and Bishop C5 both look promising, though I don't really want to chop on C3 after Bishop C after Bishop B4. Since after B takes C3, he would suddenly cover the D4 hole. I'll try Bishop F5. Since that targets the weakness on d3, while also preparing the well-timed dynamic thrust e5, e4, if the situation calls for it. Bishop f5 also gives me queen d7, followed by queenside castle, when I'm really piling up on d3. So bishop f5 is played in the game. Mr. Metallic, 0.26 up and an extra pawn. It still looks nice for us. Mr. Pink, can we make any threats? Queen f3 hits the bishop, but knight d4 defends it and attacks our queen and threatens knight c2 check. No, we can't do that. We'll just continue our plan, develop castle, and slide into a pawn up end game victory. After knight f3, we don't have to worry. After this move, knight f3, we don't have to worry about e4, since that will be helping us reach our pawn up end game. White plays knight f3. Mr. Orange, it's hard to go wrong here. I can play queen d7 followed by queenside castles and snip off d3. But that gives him time to castle. I really like the fact that his king is sitting in the middle, so I'll play more aggressively. Bishop b4 is very tempting since it makes e5, e4 even stronger. But e4 also looks good and it forces him to take a path of my choosing. There's just one problem. What happens after e4, knight h4, bishop g4, f3, e takes f3, knight takes f3, bishop c5. C so, Mr. Orange says, what happens after e4, knight h4? And then he goes through this line. Bishop g4, f3, e takes f3, knight takes f3, bishop c5, and if I can castle, his Swiss cheese position should me should allow me to wipe him out. Cause the king can't castle king side on the white pieces. So black plays e4. Mr. Metallic. White remains 0.17 ahead with knight h4. Let's do it. Besides, I think we're going to do we're doing well after knight h4, bishop g4, f3, e takes f3, knight takes f3, bishop c5, queen e2 check. Mr. Pink, knight h4 does attack his bishop, but after bishop g4, he just attacks us back. Besides, aren't knights on the rim supposed to be grim, or was that dim? Well, in any event, I don't like it at all. In your knight h4, bishop g4, f3, e takes f3, knight takes f3, bishop c5, queen e2, check, runs into king to d7. When his threat of rook e8 scares me to death. Let's just take on e4 and go into a pawn up endgame. Mr. Metallic, but I see lots of other variations after king d7. Let me show you. 
Mr. Pink, no, we're playing D takes E4, and that's that. D takes E4 is played in the game. Mr. Orange, I can take on E4 or take on D1. Both look good since any opening of the position has to favor my leading development. I'll take on E4 and see if he wants to capture on D8 and bring my rook into play. Knight takes E4. Mr. Metallic, let's play Bishop E3. Uh, then Bishop B4, Queen B3, Queen F6, Rook C1, Bishop H3, if pawn takes, the knight is hanging. Queen C2, Bishop F5, Bishop D3, Knight takes C3, B takes C3, Queen takes C3 check, Queen takes C3, Bishop takes D3, Knight to D4, Queen side castles, Knight takes C6, Bishop takes C3 check, Rook takes C3, B takes C6, F3. If Bishop takes A7, Rook H E8 check, Bishop E3, Rook E4, King D2, Bishop takes C4 check is 0, 0.0, equal. So instead of Bishop takes A7, F3 is being recommended by Mr. Metallic, and then Rook D7, King F2, and white is up 0 0.22. 0 0.22 up for us. Mr. Pink, say what? I didn't understand any of those moves. It all looks insane. Who would play a move like Bishop H3? Even if the line you gave did occur, the opposite color bishops make it a dead draw. You're starting to freak me out, Mr. Metallic. Instead of that garbage, let's just play Bishop E2 and try to castle. Bishop B2 is played in the game. Mr. Orange, he's going to castle. Have to play with as much energy as possible, or he'll get his house in order. Bishop B4, developing with threats, has to be right since Queen B3 runs in runs into Knight C5. Bishop B4 is played in the game. Mr. Metallic, Queen B3, Knight C5, Queen D1. Bishop takes D1, uh, Queen takes D1, no sorry, Bishop takes C3 check, B takes C3, Queen takes D1, one option for black was Queen A5, exclaim question mark. Bishop takes D1, Queenside castles is point, is minus point three four. So white is losing by 0.34. So we can't do that. We have to play bishop d2 instead of queen b3. Mr. Pink, why would we move our queen to b3 and then go back to d1? You're spouting gibberish. Bishop d2 is clearly the way to go. Bishop d2 is played in the game. Mr. Orange. Oh, it's, it's nice that Mr. Orange can... Uh, can hear his opponent's analysis the whole time. No, I'm just kidding. Um, Mr. Orange. He threatens to trade a lot of stuff, so I'll capture on D2 and leave him in a nasty pin. Knight takes D2. We'll end our three-way battle here. After Knight takes D2, Queen takes D2 is a possibility, but Queen takes D2 check. Knight takes... D2, knight d4, bishop d1, queenside castles, castles, rook e8, rook h8 is miserable for white since all his pieces are bad and bishop d3 is a strong threat. Also, I was just looking at some of the tactics, and this bishop has nowhere to go. If the bishop comes here and attacks the rook, uh, b5, and uh, if bishop takes b5, then knight takes, wins a piece after pawn takes. Rook takes d2, and then after, this also loses a piece um, after d takes b5, after bishop takes c3, takes check, and takes the knight. So there's a lot of tactics just from having the lead in development. Just good to analyze as much as you can. And it's something like bishop h5, g3, or g6, 
um, with the idea of trying to win this night. And, um, you know, if I guess they should, they could go back, but if they played something like g4, then the bishop's trapped. So just bishop d3 is crushing. But um, I was just looking, what if, what if king h1, and just a position like this is just so passive that it's, it's hard to even um, think it's worth analyzing for white. So knight takes d2, knight d4, rook c1, if white plays castles, bishop c2, queen e1, not queen c1, um, cause bishop takes knight and the, this is devastating. Castles, and white's in bad shape. So rook c1 is played in the game. Castles, knight f1. Castles loses the exchange after knight takes e2, and queen takes is forced because if knight takes, this knight hangs. Bishop d3 wins the exchange for black. So knight f1, queen to g5, another option was queen b6, which might have been best. Knight e3, rook a to d8, h4. We find that we were following the game Savchenko, uh, Azrian, Moscow 2007. Now queen f6 was very strong. Uh, white plays castles. If knight to d5, rook takes d5, c takes d5, rook e8 is crushing. Knight takes e2 check, queen takes e2, bishop d3 winning material. What was the point of this example? These color-coded players are representations of three Real human types. In an age, Mr. Metallic, first analysis of Mr. Metallic. In an age where every serious player has a powerful chess engine, I've watched a chess outbreak of a disease uh, appear that's unlike anything that's ever been seen before. Well, following live Grandmaster games, the masters of chess fans all suffer from a shared chess mental disorder. They think they know exactly what's going on. Topalov plays an extremely complex move in thousands right in eerie unison. Topalov is 1.02 up. He's going to win. They are parroting their engine's assessment, but they seem to make a mistake. They seem to mistake it for their own. They stare at their machine's rapid-fire bursts of moves, but they, but do they understand why it's recommending them? One might think that a chess player would see beyond the illusion and not confuse his own strengths with those of his computer. Sadly, this is not. This is often not the case. And this same illness carries over to correspondence chess and analysis. Of course, once these computer-enhanced fans take part in an over-the-board tournament, their false reality quickly crashes and burns. But they, but they can also be brought down to earth by a few words from a good chess teacher. All they need to ask, once an interesting position appears, is, what's going on here? And suddenly an honest student will realize that they've deceived themselves with the computers. Since they haven't mastered the imbalances, they can't answer the question in any deep and pen penetrating manner. And telling the teacher that so-and-so is 0.43 ahead borders on insane. On the insane. A chess engine can be very useful, but can, it can also turn into a crutch that actually prevents you from improving. Mr. Metallic was to cre created to show you that nobody thinks like a computer, nor would we want to. Chess is a game rich in emotion, art, the rush of competition, and the joy of creation. Streams of variations and displayed numbers, like .21, turn a warm, extremely human game into something cold and unknowable. Now an analysis of Mr. Pink. When you don't have a grasp of the imbalances, you're left with absolutely nothing, or, as in the case of Mr. Pink, with caveman basics like attack, defend, threats, and calculation. These are good things, 
everyone needs them. But is this a simplistic ABC approach? But is this simplistic ABC approach all you want for yourself? Mr. Orange. Though Mr. Orange couldn't calculate quite as deeply as his opponents, he saw far more than either of his foes. The imbalances gave him a well-rounded positional education that offered him a solid understanding of both quiet static positions and sharper dynamic ones. Go back and look at all the comments. It's clear that Mr. Orange was the only one that had any idea about the position's secrets and ultimate worth. Now we turn to you, the reader of this book. You might not calculate very well, or you might calculate better than Mr. Orange. It's always a good thing if you have the ability to calculate quickly and deeply, but knowledge of the imbalances will often get you by even if your absolute limit is a two or three move sequence. But wouldn't you rather be in Mr. Orange's shoes? If so, you're on your way to acquiring the knowledge that most players, for reasons that elude me, simply don't have. Philosophy. A chess engine can be very useful, but it can also turn into a crutch that prevents you from actually improving.